Hello everyone and welcome back. There are days when we jump right into finishing all our work in order to call it a super productive day. But only if all wishes could come true and we could finish everything in one day. So today I wanted to do things smartly and not hardly to make it a productive day and feel happy about my little success. A to-do list is your first step to a productive day because if things will be in front there is a better chance of finishing them. No task is big or small. Penning every single thing down on a paper helps in giving a clear picture. I had a long pending to-do list to follow so I decided to sit down and give this list a second look before jumping into finishing every single task. In order to analyze this list, I simply divided my task into two small buckets. First, what is important and super urgent and second, what is less important but can still be doable. This 10 extra minutes of thinking really helped me in focusing on all the important things that will make an impact instead of just getting overwhelmed. I also saw some possibilities of overlapping work and finding some smart ways to finishing my work for the day. Season is changing and so the work list has become long. But just making the list is not enough. Taking actions on the task, no matter how small they are, helps in collective results. So I have started taking baby steps in order to get going, like placing my beddings out in the sun. Sunlight is a natural disinfectant as the UV rays helps in killing the bacteria and molds from the bedding. This is a very small task, but at least things have started kicking in. Other seasonal demand was quickly washing the furnishings. So instead of putting everything for washing in a single day, I decided to divide it throughout the week, starting with bedroom first. Dividing the task and then working on them is a smart way of taking it off the to-do list. Just by putting the curtains in the machine, I know that the job is done. I had a party to attend in the evening, so a little TLC was what I needed. Parlor visit or calling a parlor service at home would have taken longer and also blocked the day. So I decided not to push this task off, rather do something at home instead. Some action taken on less important tasks help in giving at least some satisfaction instead of cribbing about not being able to do them at all. I started with putting the hair back because it needs 30 minutes to stay on my hair and in the meanwhile I could work on my other to-dos. Most of the time I put myself at the end of my to-do, but today I was happy to begin with pampering myself and realizing that it really doesn't take much time. Rather, it's just a strong will that's missing more often than not. It just took me 10 minutes, but the result will last for days. A small beginning always helps in pushing and get you going for the other related tasks. While the pack was doing its thing, I decided to remove my hand hair because I was already into my self-care mode. I had bought this epilator during COVID days and was super proud of this decision. With epilator being at home, my dependency on parlor is gone. It was just a small one-time investment 
that paid me back right after its third usage only. Now I have the freedom to wear whatever and whenever without being bothered about body hair. Also, I don't have to do it all in one go because this smart tool is at my service whenever I need it. So the simple idea is to use smart ways to do those tasks which takes a lot of time and energy otherwise and create friction to begin with. Just going with the old school method and seeing what others are doing might not be the right approach. Finding long lasting solutions to my own problems and creating my way of doing tasks gives better and quicker results. I believe that being productive is not just about taking tasks off your to-do list but taking those tasks that leave you satisfied for long and saves you from saying I wish I could have done that earlier. Another important task that I have been delaying ever since is organizing my medical kit. I start by sorting the existing medicines. All the expired medicines, medicines with no date, open packets goes in one side. Also to make more space in the medical box, I cut the extra empty sides of the leaf, but making sure that I put the expiry date on the remaining part of the medicine. While doing this, I also made note of those emergency medicines that are missing in this kit and need to be purchased. I do this every 6 month and it is on top of my priority because medical kit is for those uncalled emergency days and cannot be ignored for long. I keep the syrup medicines separately to avoid leakage in this box. This monkey is off my back for another 6 months now. And with such less effort, I was already feeling happy and motivated to tick off my other tasks. Kids room is one place that needs regular organizing. Thankfully, Ruthi has learned this trait while working along with me over some time. Vacations have started and toys need some sorting. I asked Ruthvi to segregate the toys and help me in putting things in place, which she opted to do very happily. Making ghee was on the top priority today because otherwise with changing weather, the cream will spoil in the fridge and will go to waste. The way I make ghee is very simple and quick and of course, the trick has been learned from my mom-in-law. I set the ghee by putting culture exactly how I set curd a night before and keep it in the fridge first thing in the morning. Once it's cold enough, I then churn it with a hand blender. It can also be done in a mixer jar but this blender saves me from heavy cleaning at the end. I will add some ice cold water so that the fat binds together and floats on top. And that's it. I will then clean this fat in the same ice cold water and put on the gas to boil on the lowest flame. In a meanwhile, I'll clean the blender and everything else with hot water and keep it at their respective places. After 10-15 minutes, the ghee will become transparent and will get its golden color. I will then turn the flame off and let it cool to store it later. I believe in making house chores more fun than a burden. Since cooking has to be done, I will make something easy to cook but still different and delicious to put together. Papar ki sabzi is a speciality of Rajasthan and gets ready in a jiffy. It's also my family's favorite 
and comes really handy when we are out of fresh vegetable stock. There are a few tips that needs to be considered while making papad ki sabzi. Keep everything ready before beginning to cook. I will first roast the papad and keep it aside. Then I will make a spicy paste of ginger garlic and all the dry spices to add it to the sabzi. On demanding days like these, I always try to balance my work. Some things might be unavoidable, so the simple rule is to make it simpler. Because a little time saved this way can further be utilized for better, even if it's about resting or spending time with family. Now it's time to add curd, but make sure the curd is at room temperature. As soon as you add the curd, keep stirring it vigorously to avoid curdling. And after 5 minutes, the gravy will start boiling. This is the time when you will add water as per your desired consistency and add the roasted papad. When you bring something new and different, you automatically remove that monotony from the system and starts enjoying the process. There were different varieties of flour left in my pantry that need to be consumed before winter fades away. So today, I wanted to make a healthy version of chapati by making my own multigrain atta. This will not only be loaded with lots of nutrition and health benefits, but will also help me in reducing the food waste and save me some money in the kitchen. And that's it. Let the sabzi come to a boil for a couple of minutes and add salt only after turning the gas off. Just by adding a little newness to my daily routine, I was able to finish this task without an issue. Rather, I was very excited to taste today's menu. The food on plate looked very simple today, but the taste was different and delightful. I kept few tasks that do not need much attention and can be completed while multitasking. Packing the winter clothes and sorting the summer clothes for kids can easily be done while chit-chatting on phone. There is a very thin line between being busy and being productive. I prefer the latter and as a productive homemaker, I always try to strike the right balance between work, life, family and self. Hope this video will help in ticking your to-do list. just the right way if yes do subscribe to the channel and like this video as a small appreciation and love follow me on instagram for some daily updates and i'll see you in my next video until next time stay tuned